today we have a crazy story of an entitled parent trying to refuse to pay for food. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, a crazy woman attacked my daughter at the movies. My daughter, 16, who's part of the LGBTQ community, likes to dress in a very androgynous slash boyish way. This is okay. She's always been like this and this year she's been free to express herself. A few months ago she got a pixie cut which looks amazing on her. When the Super Mario movie came out she went to see it at the cinema with some of her friends. I wasn't there so this is the story she told me. After the film they wanted to go somewhere else to eat but first she went to the toilet in the theater. There she saw a middle aged woman and her little daughter. My daughter was quick but when she came out of the stall the woman confronted her. One of the things she said was, why are you here? You should not be here. My daughter was obviously confused and then the woman grabbed her by the hair and shouted, why are you after my child? My daughter then cried and said, please let me go. After begging as if her life depended on it, the woman let her go and then demanded that she prove that she was a girl. My daughter cried and froze while this crazy woman screamed at her and told her to take off her trousers. She refused of course, but a man came in, saw what was happening and said to the woman, Honey, what the heck are you doing? The woman pointed to my daughter and said, This man tried to touch child's name. The man just looked at her in confusion and said, Let's get out of here, now. So they left and didn't come back. Security was called but they'd already left the theater. My daughter was reunited with her friends and then she called me. She was very upset and panicked. Obviously it was traumatic for her. We're still working on it, but she's been very quiet in therapy. The days after that, she tried to dress as feminine as possible. She almost looked like Barbie after that, but I could tell she was miserable and hated every minute of it. We tried begging her to stop and just be herself, but she's afraid that some random person will attack her again. She finally stopped, but is trying to be modest in her style. I've had enough of this town. Since my husband and I have become openly LGBTQ allies, We've seen some people ostracize us. Even my sister told me I should match my daughter with a boy to fix her. It's even worse for her, of course, because her school does nothing about bullying and the school district is discussing banning books. I was seriously planning to move to a bigger city in a better state, and both my daughter and my husband agreed. I'm very sad that I didn't realize earlier how bigoted this town and my environment are, because until last year, we didn't deviate from the norm. I need to make sure that my daughter can be safe and be herself. Since she came out, our bonds as a family have become so much stronger, but relations with the rest of the town have deteriorated and many bridges are being burned. But they're not my daughter, so I don't care. Sadly, a lot of places are really digging into this mindset. A lot of people in a lot of places genuinely believe that even if you are as much as slightly LGBTQ aligned, you're a child predator or you're supporting child predator tendencies. Various bathroom bills enable this kind of behavior. Obviously, it's an appalling way to treat another human being that you just don't have the same fundamental values as. As much as you'd like to see reform in areas that are plagued with behavior like this, Honestly, it probably is just easier and for the best for those people to move to a place that is more accepting of them, you know, surviving and living a life. Our next story is, Entitled Parents Won't Let Me or My Partner Leave the Family Business. My husband and I moved to the country eight years ago to revive a rundown farm that my grandfather used to live on. We went into this trying to turn a profit off the land with my parents. The farm is more of a money pit, unfortunately. Anyway, I had to get a full-time job leaving my husband alone to run the entire farm. We bought our first home after a couple of years and made sure it was close enough to the farm so we could keep things running. This upset my parents. They kind of got over it, but not really. So after the pandemic, we all took a financial hit and now my husband and I are expecting our first child. My husband had to get a full-time job on top of working the farm. My parents agreed that downsizing the farm over the summer was for the best, but now that me and my husband aren't available whenever they want us to be, they're getting more and more belligerent. They turned it around on us and said we're forcing them to sell the animals. For reference, they don't live near the farm and when they visit, they don't take care of anything. We told them we don't want any more financial support from the farm while we're sizing the business down. So my mother's solution to us being unavailable is leaving paychecks around or mailing them to my office or our house and now when we say no to her requests because I have a doctor's appointment or we're working our 9 to 5s, she started saying, I pay for your time, you better make it happen. 
Recently, it's become obvious they don't want to downsize anything and have me and my husband work ourselves to death. We've stopped getting income from the farm and refused to cash the checks she's sending us to make it crystal clear that we are only taking care of the animals for their sake. Since they won't sell the animals that are in their name per their request, if we just leave the business, the animals will suffer, and we would never let that happen. So now we're basically free labor on the property and I don't know how we can get out of this situation without things getting extremely messy. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, maybe letting things get a little bit messy is the way to go here. I think it's more preferable than being free labor for God knows how long. In this situation, you don't want to see the animals suffer. And obviously you don't want to relinquish them to the care of their owners because they're going to neglect them. The hardest part is that any regulation or agency that might oversee whether or not these animals are being properly cared for might not be so stringent on making sure that care going forward is still going to remain good. If you leave, they might doll it up to make those animals look fine for now, and then the care for them falls off a cliff. I don't know the best way forward while still caring for the animals. Our next story is, Untitled Karen keeps telling her son to pet my service dog. So for context, I have a one year old psychiatric service dog in training. Me and my friend went to a big Walmart with my service dog. We walked to the craft aisle so I could get some paint. I overhear a mom talking to her kid about my dog. She said, aww, kid's name, you should go pet that puppy, it looks sweet. I turn around and say, sorry, she's a working dog and can't be pet. The mom then replies, aww, but my son's just a kid and he wants to pet your dog. This is how the rest of the convo went. I said to the kid, sorry, she's a working dog, honey, and petting her could really distract her. The mom said, can you let it slide once for him? I said, no, I'm sorry, she's working. Maybe if you see me outside when she's off duty, you can pet her. I then grab my paint and me and my friends start walking away. I can hear the mom behind me telling her kid that it's okay, I'll let you pet that dog. I start laughing with my friend about it and we go look for sensory toys. When we get to the aisle, I put my dog in a down stay between my two legs to give me personal space behind me. My friend then taps me on my shoulder and said, Girl, the Karen followed us. I turn around and see her down the aisle looking at the shelf and her kid's eyes were locked on my dog. I grab my things I was looking for and then my dog jumps forward and turns around. I look back to see the kid and lose it and yell, I told you not to pet my dog, kid. The kid starts crying and runs to his mom. My friend tells me to calm down and then I say, No, I told this kid not to pet my dog. My dog tells me to sit to calm down, so I start walking away when the mom yells to me, Wow, making a kid cry over a stupid dog so mature. I yell back, Yeah, I told you and your kid no petting. I turn and walk away. I gave my friend my card and tell her to check out. I'm going to the car to calm down. When she gets to the car, she says, That was unnecessary. And... It's just a kid petting your dog, it's not like she's a medical alert. I turned to her stunned, she would say that, and the drive home was silent. I told my friends and family what happened and they said I was being overdramatic and should just let the kid pet my dog. Edit, it wasn't my mom and dad that said I was wrong, it was aunt, uncles and the other. Also, my dog would never bite someone. I think it's pretty clear that none of these people have any concept of having a service animal and how important it is that they're not distracted while doing their job. I'm sorry, but if they're regularly on the job and you allowed whatever kid to pet the dog because it's cute, eventually it's going to undo some of that training, isn't it? Our next story is, staying with my parents is a nightmare. So, during the process of getting a divorce, 36 year old male, and getting possession of my new place, I've got about a month or so. My mother graciously invited me to stay with her and my father during this process. I'm staying in my childhood bedroom, which has been converted into a guest room, despite the fact that I'm the only guest they've had. My father will randomly open the door that has no lock on it, and just take a few quick glances around and then eventually leave, when he realizes I'm just doing stuff on my laptop, no privacy. I have no guests at their place, and whenever I make myself food, they get mad and make comments over the mess. I'm a red sealed chef, I clean as I go, it's ingrained into my body and soul. The messes they get mad at will be water droplets from the dishes and utensils I clean as food cooks. And when I'm eating my meals I'll get yelled at for leaving a mess. 
not realizing I'd like to eat my meals hot as I just finished cooking them and I'll clean afterwards. I'm paying them for my stay at their place, being very respectful, but it was my mother who invited me in the first place. At this point, the hassle of making food and just trying to exist, yes, they're wanting to charge me a ridiculous amount for utilities, is getting more expensive than just living in a motel for a month. My father confronted me about how much I'm on my phone and laptop saying I need to pay them for internet usage. I tried to explain that internet bills don't work that way unless it's off of your wireless plan, and if you wanted his service charge to be lower, perhaps reduce his cable package. As he really only watches local news, the weather channel, and the sports channel, which he could easily stream off his phone and just buy a Chromecast onto a TV, the last nail in the coffin is that I want to be respectful and not eat their food. So I get my own, but I'm getting harassed for taking a very small portion of their fridge and freezer. When I brought this up, they told me to buy a mini fridge, but it couldn't be in the house. It would have to be outside. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. I'm at wit's end right now. Sorry for the rant. I'm sorry, but it's so hilariously out of touch that they said, listen, you're using a lot of internet. You're going to have to pay us for some of that. Like it's been common for regular internet usage to be metered over the last 15 years. Maybe if you've got some like crazy satellite package or yeah, you're running off of like mobile hotspot. I think at some point it's just not worth the hassle. Although a month isn't too long financially, if you still save some money, I would say just try to power through it and then once you're done, you're done, you don't have to look back at it. This next story is, it's like I have two private investigators and I'm the one being investigated. Some background, my mother, divorced, has always been known to have some issues with letting go. She recently seemed to be loosening up so I didn't think much of it. I myself am 20, male, and regularly switch between living at my mother or father's. The situation Recently due to work, I've been flipping my schedule upside down more, from waking up early and sleeping early to waking up at 2pm and arriving back from work at 12am or later. This has also made my active times swap more to midnight to early morning. One day, I decided to post a tweet at around 4am under a name I haven't told anyone in my family about. It was just a mention of an artist I was listening to a lot and nothing special. Not even a week later, my father got an email explaining I've been sending messages on Twitter at 4am. He was nice enough to show me that email, luckily, that's how I found out. Considering she doesn't even use Twitter, and the fact that I haven't told anyone in my family circle about my online name or alias, I was very surprised when I found the attached image of said tweet. Of course, my father's given me the casual don't be up late talk, but nothing much. I decided to question my mother about this, however. When I asked her how she knew my online name or alias and if she even used Twitter, I received this response. I don't use Twitter. I don't know how to. But a friend of mine sent me a screenshot of you tweeting at 4am. Visibly confused, I asked her how they knew and who that person was. She refused to answer that, no matter what. So I now know I'm online being watched for when I tweet late, but it gets worse. That event made me remember another event in the same year. Just for the sake of context, energy drinks are not allowed to be brought in her home, so whenever I do drink it, I do so outside. One day, she showed me a picture someone took of me while driving in their car which showed me exactly doing that. That happened a few times before, too. When I asked her about the Twitter email, I also asked her, Was that the same person as that was watching me drink energy? And who are they? All she did was smile and say, no, they're not the same, refusing to tell me both who it was and the reasoning. When I asked her to stop, she merely ignored, it's like I have two private investigators and I'm the one being investigated. It honestly creeps me out knowing I'm being watched both online and IRL by multiple people and they could be anywhere and anyone, even if it's just casual activities. They could be photographing me anyway. I have no idea what to do or how to get it to stop. I'm 20 years old. At some point you expect her to let go, but apparently it only gets worse. I don't know if she's going around trying to employ anybody that she can to just continue to rat on OP. Whether it's like telling neighbors to take pictures if they see something or I don't know. Obviously it feels ridiculous to have to go that far, but consulting a lawyer might not be a bad idea if you want this to stop. All I know is I would especially confront her personally telling her to back the freak off and let you live your life. 
And I would be checking every device I have, I would be changing all my passwords, anything that could be bugged, key logged, spied upon somehow, I would definitely be pouring over, considering wiping. I would just hate the feeling that my privacy on any of my devices could be pried upon. Our next story is, iPad 2 isn't meant for addicts. I used to play this iOS game named Tap Tap Revenge quite obsessively back when I was like 14 or 15, to the point where I saved up $500 just to get an iPad 2 so as to start competing. So here I am casually playing the game while riding the bus, and this 8 or 9 year old kid goes by with his mom and promptly asks me to try to play the game. I graciously let him try as long as I can see him. After about 5-6 to six minutes I engaged the two and asked for my iPad back so that I could get off the bus, at which point this conversation took place. The entitled mother says, can't you see how much he's enjoying the game? He wants to become as good as you. I said, alright, it's nice to see that he's having fun with it. I need the device back though, my stop is literally coming up and I don't want to miss it. She says, can't you just leave this one with us and get a new one? Your parents must make a fortune anyway if you got one at your age. I said, stop joking, please. Why are you making me beg for it? She says, you don't need to beg. I'm not giving it back to some addict. At this point, I realized this woman is serious. So I snapped it out of her kid's hands and put it back in my backpack. And she goes wild with cussing and accusing me of being selfish and ungrateful for a child's smile. She literally got off at the same station as me just to keep arguing with me until I just started running and got away from that freakish and fortunately out of shape woman. I just feel bad for her kid. Honestly, I hope for that kid's sake that they went and bought their own iPad. I mean, if they're willing enough to try to steal it from a kid, I sure hope they understand how much their kid would appreciate an actual one that they would buy themselves. This next story is, Entitled Mom doesn't want to pay for her food because it was made by students. It happened about two years ago, so the details are kind of vague. I just filled up the gaps with what I think happened. Okay, so this story happened in my school back when I was in 10th grade. In German schools, there's this thing called Elternabend, lit Parents' Evening, where the parents can talk with the teachers about how their children are doing in school. Our school always offered a buffet, nothing too big. We had coffee, cake, and bread rolls. At this evening, which was made by the 10th grade, who got to keep the money they made. When this event occurred, I was giving out the coffee and controlling the register, and a girl who I didn't know too well, because I didn't have classes with her, was giving out cake and bread rolls. Everything was relatively cheap, so we got lots of customers. One of them was Entitled Mother. At first, she seemed nice, just like every other customer. Entitled Mother to me said, Hello, one coffee, please. I said, of course. Entitled Mother then starts doing something on her phone. Me trying to get her attention because she didn't tell me if she wanted milk or sugar says, Excuse me? Entitled mother ignores me. I say louder, Excuse me ma'am. Entitled mother, noticeably annoyed says, What? I say, Do you want milk or sugar? She says, Yes, of course. I don't know what she wanted exactly anymore. It isn't that important anyways. I then hand her her coffee and she shouts over to the girl next to me, Oh yeah, and a bread roll for my son. The girl hands her the bread roll and Entitled Mother walks away. At this point, I'm kinda annoyed because she's looking at her phone and didn't thank us. Then the girl asks me if she handed me the money. I had actually forgotten about that. Thankfully she noticed. Me shouting said, Excuse me ma'am, excuse me. Entitled Mother turns around, What do you want? She comes over and I say, I think you forgot to pay. She says, What do you mean pay? I then point to the sign we had up which stated our prices. She says, I'm not paying for something that was made by students. School doesn't cost anything, so why should your food cost anything? I'm stunned, because I'd never even have thought that something like this could happen. I don't really know what to say, but thankfully the girl steps in. The girl says, I'm sorry ma'am, but we spent the whole day making this food and we bought the products ourselves. You have to pay. She says, but why? You're students. You're making this as a school project. I don't have to pay you, you don't get paid for writing tests either. The girl says, ma'am, this isn't a school project, we're making this voluntarily. And to earn money. Also, didn't you see the sign? She said, I thought the sign was for people who don't have anything to do with the school. I'm laughing internally. Of course, we don't get any people from outside the school. The girl says, um, ma'am, we don't really get any people from outside the school. I'm sorry, you'll have to pay. 
She says, well, I don't believe you. Also, even if others have to pay, I should get it for free because my son is so good in school, he always gets straight A's. I know this is really cliche, but she really said that. I decide to step in because the girl doesn't really know what to say anymore. I say, ma'am, I'm sorry, but if you don't pay, I'll have to get a teacher. Entitled mother says, I don't care, I'm in the right here. Go get a teacher if you want to. She then walks away to the tables. Everybody was staring at her already. Me and the girl share a confused look and then I tell her, I'm gonna go and search for a teacher. I search the whole school for about 10 minutes, but I can't find anybody. They're probably all talking with parents. So I decided to go to the third principal. He was really cool and everybody loved him. The other two principals weren't this nice. I knock at his door and thankfully he's present. I come in and tell him about the lady who didn't want to pay. He then says, show me where she's sitting. I'm going to go and talk to her. I say, okay. I take him and show him where she's sitting and he tells me to wait at our stand. They start having an argument for maybe five minutes. I don't really remember. They're not shouting or anything, but they do raise their voices from time to time. After they finish talking, the third principal comes back with the two euros she owed us. He then says, it was really hard to convince her that this isn't a school project, but I think she believed me in the end. He then hands each of us five euros out of his own wallet and says, because you had to put up with her. Me and the girl smirk at each other and we continue working. Entitled mother didn't apologize, and I didn't see her anymore. Well, I'm certainly glad that she didn't go for a round two when trying to get some actual food and not just like a coffee. Even if this was for like a fundraising thing, I can't imagine willingly choosing not to support the kids who actually put in some effort. This lady definitely fits that entitled bill. She wanted only her and her kid to be the ones who got ahead in this place. Our next story is Entitled Parents at a Grocery Store. So I'm in high school and I've been working at a grocery store as a cashier for about a year now. Now I see and deal with a lot of BS from customers, but this particular story really grinds my gears. Note, I'm generally really good with kids. I let them help, bag, and sometimes teach them how to ring, let them stand on the mat with me. So it's a Sunday just after church let out and the store is packed and a bunch of corporate people are in the store because we'd officially been open for a month. I'm alone at the register, no bagger, just me, a mother entitled, and her about three-year-old son get in line. When she starts putting her groceries on the belt, the son starts begging to be put up there too. I ignore it and continue the order I'm on, assuming she has common sense and won't put her kid on the belt. I finish up the last order and turn towards her and, surprise, surprise, see her son on the end of the belt. I turn off the sensor belt because I don't want the belt moving with a kid on it, Here's the interaction from there. Entitled mother says, why did you turn the belt off? I say, because your son's sitting on it and I don't want him to get hurt. She says, he won't get hurt. Turn the belt back on so he can ride it. I say, ma'am, I can't do that. Even if you believe he won't get hurt, it's still possible and I really don't want to be a part of that happening. At this point, a manager is watching but hasn't intervened. She says, he's not stupid. He won't get hurt. Other cashiers have let him do it before. I say, cool. Please take your son off the belt and then we can start your order. She says, let me speak to your supervisor. I look at my manager and gesture for him to come over. Manager says, what's the problem, ma'am? She says, your cashier won't let my son ride the belt while she rings up my groceries. That's bad customer service. The manager says, well, I'm glad that she won't let your son ride the belt. He could get hurt. And as a company, we try to avoid preventable customer injuries in our store. Please take your son off the belt and she will gladly start your order. Entitled mother says, put the stuff back. I'm reporting the store to corporate. Manager says, you're in luck. Our front end corporate supervisor is in the store today. I'll go get him. I'd love to know what happened, but they probably walked off and some dumb complaint happened. Probably got told the exact kind of things that OP and the manager told her. Obviously, I'm willing to bet this complaint that, hey, you won't let my kid ride the belts isn't going very far. This next story is, you chose to wait for career and marriage to have a kid? My husband and I recently bought our first house. This couldn't possibly have happened any later because of crap like this. We lived in a gentrified apartment complex. Now, we had one Section 8 dweller, entitled mother, with one child, entitled kid. They were there because they'd been there before the complex changed owners and was gentrified. 
So while my husband and I and every other tenant was paying $950 a month for a two bedroom, Entitled Mother and Entitled Kid were sitting pretty in said $950 a month apartment at the expense of the American taxpayers. This is only one of many incidents and I may share more in the future. Background. My daughter was three and had finally potty trained. We used the nappy pirate method to incentivize her towards success. So in successfully potty training the nappy pirates took all of their baby stuff, diapers, wipes, diaper bags, changing table, etc. And exchanged it for a bright red Minnie Mouse bike with training wheels and matching safety gear. We went outside for our first ride. After decking her out in her safety gear, I turned to help her onto her bike. Just one problem. The bike is gone. My daughter, with tears in her eyes, points and yells, Mommy, look! Entitled kid took my bike! Sure as crap, pedaling down the walkway is entitled kid on my daughter's brand new bike. Now, I'm Irish and was raised in an Irish community. It wasn't uncommon when I was a child to have a neighbor take me by an ear when I was acting a butt and deliver me to my parents who were instantly cross. So I went to Entitled Kid, took them off of the bike, and took them to their mother. This was the exchange. I say Entitled Kid took my daughter's bike without asking. Entitled Mother says they did ask. I say who? Entitled Kid didn't ask my daughter or me. She says Entitled Kid asked me, and I said it was okay. I say what the freak? Who do you think you are giving Entitled Kid permission to take the property of others without asking? Are you seriously teaching your child to be a thief? She says, whoa, don't insult my child. I said, I'm not insulting Entitled Kid. I'm insulting your parenting methods. She says, well, if you don't want Entitled Kid to play with your daughter's things, you shouldn't flaunt them in front of them. Why can't you make your daughter take turns with Entitled Kid? I say, because it's my daughter's property. And to teach her the concepts of ownership and autonomy, I don't tell her what to do with her belongings. She says, well, turns would just cause them to argue anyway. Why don't you give Entitled Kid that bike and get your kid a new one? I say, you're kidding, right? She says, no. You and your husband both work. You can afford it. Then they'll both have the same thing and they won't argue. I say, um, that's gonna be a no. You see, my husband and I are only obligated to provide for our child, not Entitled Kid too. Entitled Mother turns to Entitled Kid and says, See, Entitled Kid, T's mommy and daddy are snobby and selfish. They don't understand that some people choose to be mommies instead of choosing college and careers before family. I turn to Entitled Kid and say, Exactly, Entitled Kid. Mr. OP and I got educations and developed careers so we could provide for T, my daughter. Entitled Mother says, So because you did that, you're better than me? It is your responsibility to take care of the less fortunate, like Entitled Kid and me. I said, no, it's not. Well, not past what my taxes provide for you. I walk away to her grumbling under her breath while telling Entitled Kid that they could not go out to play while my daughter was outside. While this exchange was occurring, T was outside with Mr. OP, happily pedaling the bike she earned. Honestly, I hope that what OP said resonates and sticks with this kid, but considering the fact that their parent turned around and immediately started pounding some alternative information in their head, I fear for them growing up. Our next story is, Entitled Mother thinks family bathroom is only for her and baby. Yesterday, I, 37-year-old female, got off a plane in the US and rushed to the airport bathroom. I have radiation colitis from cancer treatment and am prone to diarrhea and incontinence. I had a small accident while deplaning but was trying to hold the rest until I got to the bathroom. Not the first time this has happened and I carry clean clothes and wipes with me whenever I travel. Anyway, I noticed a long line at the women's bathroom and saw that the family care bathroom was vacant and no one around looking to use it so I stepped inside. I hear screaming behind me, but ignore it because it's a busy airport and thought nothing of it. As I'm closing the door behind me, a woman carrying a baby literally puts her hand and body between the door and opens the door and the following interaction occurs. The angry entitled mother says, excuse me, this is a family restroom, this is not for you. Me trying to hold in the rest of my crap, sorry, you'll have to wait. She says, we need to use this bathroom. I say, not that it's any of your business, but I have a disability. She says, what disability? 
She's still preventing me from closing the door with her body and hands, while holding a baby, mind you, and literally would not let go, still screaming, what disability? She still held on. I overpowered her and pushed her back with the door, then pulled the door closed and locked it. Freak her and her freaking baby, you don't have a monopoly on family restrooms, which need a completely different title altogether in my opinion, and you don't get to harass a literal cancer patient because you chose to reproduce. I hope she and her baby crap their pants, like I did. You know, on second thought, it does have kind of a misleading name. I'm guessing family was just kind of the easiest all-encompassing word. All access or everyone is kind of just like weird sounding. I mean, what's a good word to identify a bathroom that's spacious and friendly and equipped for literally anybody? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.